Welcome back to Take Action News, everybody. David Schuster here. By the way, special segments coming up next hour every week for the last you know, several months, ever since the Rana Plaza collapse in Bangladesh. Daniel Marins has been doing an amazing, amazing job piecing together the latest reporting and talking about the connections between those horrific factory conditions in Bangladesh and the consumer choices that uh, all too many of us are making here in the United States. If, uh, if Daniel Marins doesn't uh, win some awards for his great work, I'm giving my broadcast awards back. Two segments coming up next hour, and I guarantee you're going to want to listen. Joining us now, though, on Take Action News, our very own We Act Radio's Cliff Schechter. Cliff, how you doing, my friend? I'm doing great, David. How are you, buddy? I'm doing uh, pretty well. So, Cliff, you know, uh, we, like to, uh, we like to talk about the, what's going on in conservative media. And there was something that just uh, jumped out at me again, uh, as it often does, and that is Bill O'Reilly. He was talking about the efforts in Texas to ban abortions after 20 weeks, in which legislature they've now done that. But uh, he was trying to essentially justify, justify why there should be, why women should not have rights to their own bodies after their fetus has gone to the 20-week threshold. And here's what Bill O'Reilly said. Um, most countries in the world have the 20-week threshold. And, right. and, and we have, some states don't have any. You can just kill the baby or the fetus, however you want to describe it, anytime you want, for any reason, you know, women's health, that's any reason at all. Women's health, that's any reason at all to kill off a baby, mocking it, um, as if, you know, you know, I don't know, a woman perhaps dying because of her pregnancy or carrying a, a deformed baby or, or whatever. What, 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 is a, what is that about? He's such a despicable character. Uh, you know, I take, uh, this is even a little more personal to me because when I was doing promotions for the book I wrote in 2008, The Real McCain, I went on his radio show, and he spent part of the time I was on ranting and raving about how, you know, about Tiller the baby killer, Dr. George Tiller, who eventually was assassinated in May of 2009 um, and, and probably helped out uh, by the, the rantings and ravings of the lunatics on the radio uh, and TV like Bill O'Reilly, who, who dehumanized this person and turned him into a murderer. Um, and then he was saying the similar thing to what he's saying now on that show I was on, which is, oh, if a woman has a pain in her foot, you know, she could just go get an, an abortion right before the baby comes out. I mean, other, obviously, this is the same garbage he spews on most other issues where he literally doesn't know his facts. He doesn't care to know his facts. One of his own producers who, who came out, you know, in Whistleblow on Fox has admitted that, that, you know, they, that he was let know, they let him know that there were certain things he was saying was false and he thought it was good copy, so he kept saying it. Uh, obviously, that's absolutely ridiculous what he's saying. You don't, you know, even Roe versus Wade uh, has banned on late term abortions. It's, if a woman's health or life is in danger, it's a different story. But, you know, it, it, it's not what he makes it out to be. Obviously, um, he's just doing it for effect, he's just doing it for attention. You know, maybe, maybe his next book after killing Kennedy and killing Lincoln, he can write one called Killing Tiller, give himself some credit there. You know, I, I guess, I, I mean, I can respect that some people for religious views, deeply held, fundamental religious views, believe in, in the life of, you know, the unborn fetus, and that's fine. But Bill O'Reilly is not a particularly religious guy, from what I understand. And, and at the same point, I mean, he may, he may want to make these decisions in his family, if it's, you know, his daughter or his grandchildren or, or people in his family, he wants to forbid them from having any reproductive rights after the fetus is 20 weeks and order them not to go to a doctor. I suppose, you know, that he can do what he wants in his family. But the issue is, you know, shouldn't we all have the right to make that decision, that incredible life or death decision ourselves? And, and I feel like that's where so much of what is heard on the right, what is said about in the abortion debate, just is so either disrespectful or doesn't understand that you know, women who have to make these decisions, they don't make them lightly. They don't just go off and willy-nilly get an abortion or willy-nilly you know, decide to terminate their pregnancy. The idea that women aren't thinking about this and that therefore the Bill O'Reilly's of the world have to make this decision for them is ludicrous. Of course. And look, something like 98% of abortions are in the first three months. So we're talking about a very small number here. And obviously, if they're happening that late, they're, they're happening for a reason. Uh, often because a woman's health is in danger. and there are other, I mean, it's just taking something else and turning it into a political football. It's making light of the situation. And, and you're right, uh, David. Everybody has the right to their own religious beliefs. Uh, and, and if they believe abortion is wrong, no, one, no one's forcing anybody to, to, to go and, and terminate a pregnancy. But for many economic reasons, often caused by the Bill O'Reilly's of the world that will not raise the minimum wage, will cut people's health care, get rid of Obamacare, will force women into all these, uh, you know, that's what forces women into a lot of these situations. 
situation where, where you know, they, they have to make that choice. And the choice is theirs alone. It's not Bill O'Reilly's. And quite frankly, when we're talking about the religiosity of Bill O'Reilly, I do remember that part of Le- Leviticus that said, thou shalt talk about loofahs on the phone with Andrew Macris. I believe I remember that part. It was a, it was a, so, I mean, you know, we just got to be lecturing anybody on morality. Give it a rest, pal.